All right, let's take a look at trig. We have three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. There are three main functions because um, if you look at the three different pieces of a triangle, meaning the three different sides of a triangle, there are three different ratios you could look at, right? So sine takes a look at the opposite and hypotenuse ratio, meaning if you draw a particular triangle, there's a particular ratio given the angle between how long the opposite side is to the hypotenuse. Well, there's a different ratio for the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And again, that's what cosine does. So if you tell your calculator to do cosine, you're telling your calculator to look at the ratio of the adjacent side to hypotenuse. And then, of course, well, what if I want to look at the two legs, right? Sine looks at the opposite to hypotenuse. Cosine looks at the adjacent to the hypotenuse. Well, there has to be another trig function, tangent that looks at opposite to adjacent. And now you have all three sides related to each other. Um, okay, so let's talk about what is the hypotenuse, what's the opposite, and how adjacent, and how do you know that? Well, you want to notice that the adjacent and the opposite are always the legs of the right triangle, and hypotenuse, of course, is always the longest side. It's also the one across from the right angle. So the hypotenuse should be very easy to identify. Um, adjacent and opposite, those are just words in mathematics and they mean exactly what they mean in regular English. So if I'm looking at this angle, this is the adjacent side because it's the next to, right? That's the word adjacent means, next to. This side is next to the angle and opposite in mathematics means across. So the opposite side is across from the angle that's given, the adjacent is next to it, and of course the hypotenuse is across from the right angle and it's the longest side. So instead, if I was looking at the top angle, well then this would be the adjacent leg, this would be opposite, and of course that would be the hypotenuse. That's the slanted one, that's the one across from the right angle. Okay, and again, we need three separate trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, because we have three different ratios that we can look at. We can look at those two, those two, or those two, depending on the situation. So. Let's take a look at a numerical example. Let's say I had this triangle, this right triangle, the 5, 12, 13 triangle, and I was looking at that angle theta. So if I said sine of theta should equal what? Well, sine of theta should be opposite over hypotenuse. Again, if this is the angle, the 5 is the opposite of it. The 12 is, of course, the adjacent, meaning it's next to the angle. And then the 13 is, of course, the hypotenuse. So sine of the angle, and this theta is maybe a new variable for you, but it's just like x. We usually use theta, um, theta, when we're talking about an angle. We use x, y, and z, or little a, b, and c when we're looking at side lengths. So theta is this variable, just a Greek letter. Um, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta would be 5 thirteenths. Cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent would be um, opposite over adjacent. Okay, to help remember these, a lot of people do to say, so ka toa, right? Kind of like a mnemonic phrase, but it's actually just like a mnemonic word uh, per se, where it says that if you just remember, so katoa, and you're going to write it down, so katoa, so katoa, so katoa, so katoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this Sokotoa helps you remember what trig function goes with what ratio. I also want you to remember that we, we certainly know that for right triangles, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if you know two of the sides, doesn't matter if it's two of the legs or a leg and a hypotenuse, you can find the other one using the Pythagorean theorem. Don't forget that. And we also know that the three angles add up to 180, but for us, since trig is really only used in geometry for right triangles, we really know that the two angles um, add up to 90. So I'm gonna just write complements, right? This angle and this angle, or this angle and that angle, or this angle and that angle, those add up to 90 because the whole thing adds up to 180 and 90 of it's right there, so the other 90 have to be there. So remember that the, the two angles are complements. We know the Pythagorean theorem, and then we're gonna use a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, to find 
one of the missing sides and then in the future we can actually use it to find a missing angle. Okay, so let's do some problems. All right, so let's say I have this, okay? I know that this is 12, the hypotenuse, and I know this angle is 20. Hmm, what, how can I use a trig function to find x? Okay, so let's write this down. Let's go through the thought process. First, let's write down Sokotoa. Sokotoa. It might be a good thing to write down at the top of your paper. Sokotoa. Okay, so let's look at this one. If I'm looking at this angle 20 degrees, well, this x is opposite it. So I, I want the opposite, and I have the hypotenuse. And you ask yourself, what trig function relates those two things? And you're like, well, what relates the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that's sine. So we could write the equation, sine of the angle, sine of 20, equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, that's easy. All I have to do is multiply both sides by 12, and I should get x, right? Algebraically speaking, this is x dividing by 12. So I can just multiply by 12 there and multiply by 12 there, right? Those 12 cancel. And then all I have to do is get out my calculator and take 12 times sine of 20. Okay, buttons on the calculator, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent right there. So 4.1, let's round to the nearest tenth. So x equals 4.1, sweet. Okay, problem number one done. All right, let's go on to this next one. Okay, how about this? I want x. I know the hypotenuse is 15, and I know the angle is 62. Well, if I'm talking about this angle, you see how x is next to it? So this is the adjacent side. This, of course, is the hypotenuse. Well, what trig function relates the adjacent to the hypotenuse? Adjacent hypotenuse, well, that's what cosine is. So I can write the equation. Cosine of 62 equals adjacent x over hypotenuse 15. And again, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 15. So x is just going to be 15 times cosine of 62. Oh, 62 about. And I'm going to get 7, um, 7.0, I guess, if I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. Okay, 7.04 would round down to 7. Okay, so x is 7. All right, how about this one? Ooh, this one. I don't have the hypotenuse this time. Hmm. Okay, but I have this angle, and if you look at this angle, this is adjacent, it's next to, and this is opposite. Well, look over here. Tangent is opposite and adjacent. Tangent relates these two, the legs. So tangent of 35 is the opposite over the adjacent. Well, that's easy. Look, the x is in the numerator again. All three of these were examples where x was in the numerator of the ratio. So all you have to do is multiply by 8 over to the other side, right? It's dividing on the right side, so it's multiplied over, and you get 8. Tangent of 35, and we hit enter, and we get 5.6. Okay? Nothing too hard about that. Okay. So, I gave you three different examples. One example was sine, one example is cosine, and one example is tangent, so you just got used to those. But all three of those, the variable ended up in the numerator of the ratio. Well, I'm going to flip it around now. Okay, so let's look at here. This is my angle 40. This is the adjacent leg. This is the hypotenuse. So think about what trig function relates those two things. Oh, that's cosine. Okay, so cosine of 40 is 6 divided by x, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. You're like, oh man, I don't want x in the denominator. I need x in the numerator, right? When you eventually solve for x, it's x equals something in the numerator. So the first thing I got to do is multiply both sides by x. And then I'm going to get this statement. And again, that's x times cosine. But I want x times something. I want x all by itself. So we have to divide. And that's OK. Cosine of 40 is just a number. It's just the ratio. So all I'm going to do then is take 6 and divide by cosine of 40. And I'm going to get 7.8. Oops. So x here equals 7.8. All right, no problem. All right, this one. All right, that's my angle. So that is opposite of the angle, right, across from, and that's the hypotenuse. Uh, opposite and hypotenuse are related by sine. So I'm going to write sine of the angle. 
equals opposite over hypotenuse. You're like, oh man, look at that. Variables in the denominator again. It's gonna take me two steps to solve. The first step is to multiply by x, and the second step is then to divide out, because I, I want x all by itself. Okay, so then I'm gonna get my calculator. Let's do 10 and divide it by sine of 58, and I get 11.8. x equals 11.8. Okay. All right, this last one, we're going to even go even further. We're going to end up solving it, meaning we're going to figure out everything. But first, let's find x. x is the adjacent side. 7 is opposite, again, when you're looking at that angle. And, okay, opposite and adjacent. Oh, yeah, that's tangent, right? Tangent of my angle 20 equals opposite over adjacent. And, again, X is in the denominator, so that's a two-step algebra process. X times tangent of 20 equals 7, and then X equals 7 divided by tangent of 20. All right, so 7 divided by tangent of 20, and I get 19.2. All right, now, what if I said, you know what? I don't just want X. I want everything about this thing. Well, we know it's a right angle. What angle is this then? Well, if that's 20, doesn't this have to be 70? All right, so now I know both angles. And if you know that x is 19.2, right, so we now know this is 19.2, can't you just use the Pythagorean theorem and say that the hypotenuse, 19.2 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. I'm just going to use c for the hypotenuse. So that's 19.2 squared plus 7 squared. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And then let's take the square root of that. Uh, square root. Oh, I didn't write that down. Let's just do it all in one step. This calculator is kind of screwy. 19.2 squared plus 7 squared. And we'll put parentheses, right? We want the square root of that. And we get 20.4. C equals 20.4. So if you look at that last one, I know everything about that triangle. I know both angles. I found the adjacent leg here. And then I actually found the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so in general, it's what I did every time. I picked the correct trig function. Again, you pick the function based on what you have and what you want. For example, this one, I had the opposite and I wanted the hypotenuse, so I picked sine. Over here, I wanted the adjacent and I had the hypotenuse, so I used cosine. Here, I had the opposite and I wanted the adjacent, so I used tangent. There's only two choices. Either you solve with one step or two step. If the variable x or y or whatever is in the numerator, all you have to do is multiply by the 12. If the variable is in the denominator, it requires two steps. Multiply the x and then divide by the cosine. Okay, that should give you a pretty good intro on how to use trig. Um, you know, you can remember we do have the three trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. We have the Pythagorean theorem. We have the fact that the angles are complements. I'm going to suggest that you write Sokotoa down um, to kind of remember the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and then what they do. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And really, this all goes back to similar triangles and the fact that, you know, when you type in sine, of you know, 60 degrees, you know that's gonna give you this ratio because every single 60 degree triangle uh, is a 30, 60, 90, and it has that exact ratio between those two sides. And so your calculator just, you know, is really just a catalog and stores that information.